Now we begin the discussion portion of this event, and we ask, we'll ask any of you who have questions or to share comments to line up at this microphone, and please speak into the microphone. We are very lucky, lucky to have facilitating this conversation tonight Joseph Tavares, who's a filmmaker, and he's the executive producer of WGBH's La Plaza, and joining him is Giovanni Giovanna Negretti, who is the executive director of OISTE, the Massachusetts Latino political organization. Please join me in welcoming them. Thank you very much. Um, I think of this film as um, it's a very sad film for a number of reasons, and a very emotional film, but I also think of it as a very ironic film. Um, most of the program takes place in Austin, Texas. There are people of I'm sorry, you can't see me. Um, which is named for the man who first brought U.S. settlers uh, to Texas, uh, which was then a territory of Mexico. Uh, some historic, con uh, some context here. Um, illegal immigration has, an a pro has been a problem in Texas, and I'm from Texas. Uh, for a very, very long time, uh, but it was uh, sort of flip-flopped about 100 and, uh, 150 years ago. In 1820, it was the government of Mexico that was complaining about Ill illegal immigration from the United States into Texas and uh, at one point moves to seal that border. And what was pushing white settlers into the U.S. at that time were many of the same factors that are pushing people from Mexico and Central America into the United States today, I and mean, they're economic factors. Uh, I think people want to feed their families and people want to get ahead in life, and that's why they move. This is a, this is a very transnational story where people cross the border, really in both ways. Um, and, and, and the idea about it being in both ways is very important. That border today um, is very porous because ideas and, and culture and people go back and forth across that river. Um, one of the things we have to remember is that it is both ways, and uh, one of the things you don't hear about is that there are a lot of Americans, mostly retirees, who are living in Mexico technically illegally. We don't hear that story, but they're also living there for economic reasons because it's much cheaper, and on, a lot of them are on fixed incomes. Um, I think the big idea for me in this film, um, and I think the idea that the filmmaker is trying to get across is that the, the immigration policy of this country is hypocritical. And I think what the film pauses, posits is that we need these workers to build our cities. Uh, in Boston, I think we need workers to, to clean our office buildings. In Los Angeles, they need people to clean rich people's homes. Uh, but yet, we refuse to grant them the protection that they need. That's her point of view. And I look forward to discussing what your point of view is a little later. Thank you. Um, buenas noches. Um, I, I um, thank you, Joseph, for that wonderful historic context because I look at this film in a, in a particular way. I'm Puerto Rican. I, I, and Puerto Ricans, for better or for worse, depends on who you talk to, are American citizens. Um, and uh, we're, we come here with, it, with sort of a privilege, right? We can come here and work. So, so it's interesting for me as a Latina to see this film and see the reality of an immigrant population um, in the South and Southwest and of, of America and see it through Latino eyes. And it's very, it was very, it impacted me incredibly um, because I think there are similarities and also differences about the reality of immigration between the South and, and the West of the United States and here in the Northeast. Um, how immigrants come to New York and to, and to Boston and to New Hampshire and to Connecticut, the reasons why we come here, how we come here, are very different why, as to why and how we go, or sometimes similar as to how or why we go to Texas or California or Arizona, et cetera. And that, to me, is very particular and very interesting to me. Um, I also thought that um, we have some questions that I think it's more important to see what you think and, and start discussing that. But just questions that I pose to myself and also thoughts that I'd like to share with you is I just want to applaud the humbleness of my people, the, the work um, ethic of my people, uh, the perseverance to better our situation wherever we are, and, and um, our, our honoring of our families. And I just want to just say that up front because the people that, we're, um, that we see here in this film um, today, that's us, that's our culture. We honor our family, 
We honor work. We're a humble people, and we contribute. We just want to contribute to our families and to the betterment of this country. And I applaud that, and I honor that. Um, that that was on cue. That, um, also, I wanted to also say that um, homeland security is something that, that is going to change the, the immigration situation here in the United States. And I, I'd, like to share, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how you think that's going to impact us as a people, not just Latino immigrants, but immigrants in general, um, and the perception of immigrants um, in this country. It's amazing how, and the statistics that they said about Austin, how, how the unemployment rate in Austin is of uh, 2%, and here there's this widespread perception that, that immigrants come here to take away our jobs, right? And there's a 2% unemployment rate in Austin, Texas, so what jobs are actually they taking away? <laughs> That's that. And then there's 4% national unemployment rate that to me was shocking. This is, these are 2,000 um, figures, of course. But as jobs are going to be lessening in this country because of the war, because of uh, uh, the Homeland Security Act. How, what, how are we going to, how are, how is government, how are people going to be retaliating, retaliating against um, immigration and immigrants of this country? Legal and, and illegal um, immigrants. So I'd like to, let's start the discussion. That, those are my views, only my thoughts. And um, I, let's start the discussion about what your views and your um, thoughts are about this film. And let's, um, let's see if we can get a political here. Any thoughts? Come on, don't be shy. En español también, okay. Aquellos de ustedes que, que deseen participar en español y, y deseen este, compartir sus experiencias o compartir eh, sus opiniones sobre esta película, sobre este documental, por favor, no, no duden en hacerlo, que nosotros podemos proveer traducción. ¿Sí? All right, I have some questions then I want to pose you. <laughs> I knew this would happen. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Let's start with an easy one. Why, why do immigrants come to the United States? Why do you think, and what is the role of immigration in the architecture of American society? Come on, there's some students here. And I'm sure there's some immigrants here. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. A shy crowd. Oh, Thank great. you. Thank you. I'll step up to the mic. I'm not actually going to answer your question. I'm going to pose another one sure, instead. Um, I know that a lot of new immigrants are coming, not only the illegal immigrants that were in this movie, but also ones that are much more educated. And the statistics that were just released this week and that 25% of immigrants coming now have a college education. So I think one of the things that's really pushing the awareness in the global American marketplace is the fact that a lot of immigrants coming now are much more educated. And as a consultant working in these issues, I'm finding that companies are now beginning to come face to face with not only do they need immigrant labor, our population is going to be declining shortly. There's going to be a shift here. And that immigrant labor is not only just coming in at minimum wage, but it's actually coming into their mid-management level. And so there's being a big shift, um, and I don't know if you have had any experience in that and sort of how companies are beginning to force that, that shift is being forced upon them, but they're then seeing that it's not just, you know, manual labor that's coming in as immigrants, but it's actually much more into the mid-management level. Have that's that's very interesting. Do you, do you want to answer that? No. Actually, okay. <laughs> Let, let's just clarify the roles here. This, mm. this is a participatory forum. We are not the experts on immigration. We're not government officials. We're not, this is not, we are here just to share our personal views of, of this film. And the, the, I think what we want to get out of here, right, come leave here, not only with the impression of this film, but also what, what we can learn together as a group. From most, each other. From each other, yeah. exactly. And, and see, who knows what can come out of this discussion. So that's, that's what it's all about. So the more you participate, the more interactive, the better. We don't have the, okay. the answers to yep. your questions, but maybe someone from the audience does. So can any, does anybody else want to have an opinion? Yes, yes please thank come you. Como no. Bueno, a mí me parece que ese documental es una buena ilustración 
de cómo viven los inmigrantes hispanos en un principio al llegar a esta nación. Y que a lo largo de América Latina, como decía el Señor, soy amigo de todo menos del presidente. Los gobernantes nuestros no se preocupan por la clase de abajo. Y entonces, solo nos queda el éxodo y donde vemos es hacia Estados Unidos. Y la otra parte, que veo que también algunos inmigrantes ya están como despertando y comienzan a organizarse, donde ponen sus cartelones y le ilustran a, las, a, a la comunidad que ellos no son delincuentes, sino gente que vienen simplemente a trabajar con mejores sueños para la familia, para la comunidad. Esa es la parte que, que le vemos y que ellos, con el ejemplo del trabajo, le dicen, no, nosotros no somos delincuentes. Nosotros somos personas que venimos acá a trabajar. Y ese mensaje es bueno, que llegue también a las autoridades, que siempre tiendan la mano con la ley más suave para los indocumentados, que sería muy importante. Uh -huh. Y eso, eso es cuanto. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. I'd like to sort of paraphrase the, a translation for that. I, I, I'm not very quick, and, and I was, and if, please, if you got something that I didn't, please help me here. Um, he said that he, he, he liked the film because it illustrated um, how many Latinos come here and, and the situations um, of how immigrants come here to live and work. And he, was, he identified with that, with the, what the, um, I think the Ramon was the name of the, of the gentleman who who's, um, passed away. He said, I'm not a friend of, um, of government, and um, any situations, government situation are, are the ones that bring us here. Um, he said that he was very proud to see the, the whole focus on organizing because it illustrates that, we're n that immigrants are not delinquent, that, we, that immigrants come here to work, they have dreams for family, that he, he liked the way that how they use the example of work to show that um, we, um, immigrants are not a delinquent people, that that was a good um, message, good message to see if the laws of immigration for illegal immigrants are a little softer for, for illegal immigrants. Something like that? I think that was, that was great. I think what, what he does is sort of echo the story that we just saw in the film, and I think it's important to realize that I mean, these are not isolated stories. There are millions of these stories across the country. Do we have another question? Please, come on up to the microphone. Um, comment? I'm, it's a comment. It's, it's um, not terribly comfortable with the microphones and, and in addressing groups, but um, I worked a number of years with farm, worker, um, farm workers here on the East Coast, and most recently six years in Costa Rica, just returned uh, less than a month, a month ago. Um, in a way, I think the situation is more dramatic than even than, than um, the window that you've just opened for us um, shows. The, um, but, but perhaps the, 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 it's really important to understand it stepping back a little bit from the personal um, the, that, that this is part of, of the economy and it's, 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 uh, it's built into the economy. Um, whole industries depend on and are subsidized by the presence of undocumented workers um, who not only affect the wage rate but also the, the, the working conditions in general. And, um, yeah. As, as a group of workers, a wave of workers begins to get their feet uh, on the ground and begin to learn the ropes in a community and, and where to go for support and such, they're almost always um, replaced by another wave of workers. Um, when um, Puerto Rican workers uh, in Jersey began organizing, they were replaced by undocumented Mexican workers, the same in the mushroom plants in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Um, uh, the onion fields in, in Orange County, New York, are the, are the examples I, I can point to. Um, and one of the key, the, one of the key things, it, it was, it's really interesting to watch that transition and maybe something worth saying. Um, as, as workers begin to defend their rights um, and a new group of workers is brought in, 
the, 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 the old workers, the, 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 the workers who are only willing to work an eight-hour day and, and, and insist on using a mask when they go in to apply formaldehyde are, are seen as the in, new workers as lazy um, because they'll only work eight hours and the, um, and, and, and the, the workers who are trying to defend their rights see the new workers as folks who won't stand up for themselves. And that's a, a dynamic that, that employers have to do very little to develop. It almost happens all by itself. All they have to do is know that if they want to keep wages, squeezing wages, then, then they need to bring in a new group of people um, to do that. And I guess what was, and, and well, to, 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 to internationalize this just for a second, the only other thing I'll say is, it was a complete surprise to me to discover that this situation exists outside the U.S. to an increasing extent, that now Nicaraguan workers um, are the backbone of agricultural labor in Costa Rica, but they also, um, in construction, in for domestic help, and for private security. And, um, and you can look at parts of those industries and, and see that the government needed those that those undocumented workers to be there in order to boost agro-export to meet World Bank quotas and, and, and that sort of thing. So that, that while government, and, and, and in a sense, government is, is by, by creating a group of workers who, who it's defining as illegal, um, it, 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 you're, you, you, you subsidize the industries that they're also going to be attracted to um, yeah, let me read that for a time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> My English is no good. I'm sorry. No, está bien. But I am African. Yo soy africano. Yo soy de Guinea Bissau. Y yo vine a ese país para ver si mejoro mis condiciones. Y también estoy aquí para aprender, como están viendo, ¿no? Nosotros tenemos compañeros que son de la Alianza Hispana. Y no solo trabajar, porque si uno viene aquí, no para hacer lo que nosotros vimos ahí, que nada más trabajar. Yo creo que nosotros tenemos que tener una cosa en nuestra cabeza, que debemos mejorar nuestras condiciones. Eh, a pesar que yo no sé hablar inglés, ¿no? Y... No lo sé, pero español yo lo sé. Mi idioma oficial es portugués. Y estoy aprendiendo poco a poco y estoy muy alegre por estar aquí. Y también eh, la cosa que más nos hace sentir mucha dificultad es, eh, bueno, las leyes están por ahí. Y nosotros estamos de acuerdo con, con las leyes. Pero tiene que haber algunas leyes que tienen que proteger algunas eh, los indocumentados principalmente. ¿No? Porque necesitamos de estar aquí en ese país, necesitamos de, de mejorar nuestras condiciones y cuidar también nuestros parientes o familias. Uh -huh. Y yo quería preguntar que también a ustedes si esa, ¿cómo se dice? La película esa, si lo llevan para toda parte del, de los Estados Unidos para que la gente vean, para que crean que eso debe sí, ser así. Le van a pasar por todos los Estados Unidos. Ok, sí. gracias. Perfecto. I'll do a brief translation of that, um, again, paraphrasing. Uh, he said that uh, he's from Africa, that he, his English is poor, but his Spanish is absolutely perfect. Um, he said that he came here to better his, condi his condition, you know, and, but also to, and to work, but also, more importantly, to learn. Um, he said that he was here with some um, people with Alianza Hispana, um, he says that we have to keep in our heads that it's not only about work, like we saw in the picture, but also to better our situation, our conditions, and, and learn. Um, he said uh, that his official language is Portuguese. He's happy to be here. He says that he understands that our laws out there um, about immigration, that he agrees with, with the law because it's the law, but some, there should be some laws that, to protect undocumented um, immigrants because this country needs of undocumented immigrants, just like the undocumented immigrants need of this country, and that we need to um, better these laws and have some laws to protect undocumented immigrants and because we, all we want to do is, is um, better our conditions and take care of our families. And he asked us if this 
documentary would be presented in other places of the United States, and Joseph um, answered yes, it will be presented in all in other places around the United States. Hi, thanks. My name is Graciela Moreno. I also work for OISTE, the Massachusetts Latino Political Organization. Um, this film affected me in several ways. One, I'm Mexican, so the faces were familiar. They're the faces of my uncles and my aunts, and, and it touched me because I also lived in Texas, so I, I've driven by the places where employers come by and pick up employees, and uh, sometimes these employees aren't returned to their place that they would picked up. Sometimes they're missing. Sometimes, many times, they're not paid. I think my, my one point that I want to make is when you watch, when somebody puts together a documentary like this, they're not appealing to the workers who live that life. Um, those workers already know that that's the conditions. I think that when somebody puts a documentary like that, they're appealing to those of us who are privileged to be voters and to be legal immigrants in this country because it, it, it is, in fact, when you compare our situation to the situation of those who are here you know, many times working longer hours under much harder conditions than, than we like to complain about, um, that what they're trying to say is, is just like any other movement, the civil rights movement, any movement um, that's taking place in this country, it isn't until white people started dying that black people got rights. It wasn't until straight people started dying that gay people got rights. And it isn't until those of us who are here and privileged start taking a stance also for these laws that it, we're going to be able to get anywhere. Um, as a people, as a human people. Um, I'll say this in Spanish to, to avoid, um, to address the people here who are speaking Spanish. Um, solamente decía que yo soy um, mexicana y esta, esta película me afectó mucho porque soy mexicana y esas caras son las caras de mi gente, de mi familia. Y que esta película no se hace para explicarnos, a no, so, a, no, no, no se creó para explicarle a la gente que vive en esas condiciones, esa gente ya lo sabe esa gente que se levanta a trabajar todos los días, así como esa gente lo hizo, sino que esa película está hecha para que nosotros, los que tenemos el privilegio de ser documentados, podamos pararnos en fuerza con esa gente que no está documentada para poder unir las fuerzas juntos y poder cambiar las leyes o uh, influenciar cómo se hace esto de, de la migración. Este, estos son mis comentarios solamente. Gracias. Gracias. Hello, my name is Sonia Pinto Torres, and I, I want to thank thank you for showing this film. I, I was very touched by it, also, and um, I wanted to mention that um, there's a coalition for legalization of undocumented people called the Massachusetts Legalization Coalition that I'm a part of, and I brought some information that's out on the table. Um, but with respect to what people have been saying about laws to protect undocumented people, that uh, we're working very hard with other immigrant organizations from around the country, there is some momentum despite the passing of the Homeland Security Act and the Patriot Act um, f to, to increase the, or to actually to have protections for undocumented people. Um, and there is some history uh, that there was a law passed in 1986 that gave um, amnesty for undocumented people and we're seeking something much broader uh, today. So I want to invite everybody here to join us if you can. We meet once a month at the Red Cross, and our next meeting is Tuesday, March 25th, 6 p.m. at 285 Columbus Ave, the Red Cross building. There's information and a um, community pledge form out on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Good evening. I'm Westy Egmont. I run the International Institute of Boston, which is the biggest of the refugee and immigrant service agencies. Um, I, thanks to the Ford Hall Forum. Uh, great to have the film and obviously a response from Boston. We, we need more of this discussion. Um, obviously, there's, there's some issues here that need to be addressed. And one is that for those of us who are Latina the, or those who are, it's real important, I think, to ask, what are you joining? And I think the invitation really is a very important part of the response. You can't watch this film without saying, so what? What should I do? It's real important to belong to something working on the issue. This will not change if you think about it and you just complain. The film only has power if we respond by, by lifting up our voice. A lot of us um, 
We're very concerned. Uh, George W. Bush ran on a, a pro-immigrant platform. He said he wanted America to be a nation with open arms. Um, I think the intention was good as the governor of Texas. On September 10th, 2001, he was holding a meeting in the White House with representatives of Vincente Fox, and they were working together on an open border concept for the free exchange of labor between Mexico and the United States. Um, I'm no fan of George W. Bush, but I am a great appreciator of the fact that his Texas roots made him aware of the fact that this was going on day in and day out, and he was looking for a way to make it legitimate. Um, the new Homeland Security initiatives are doing everything they can to make this almost impossible. And we're spending millions more uh, by hiring thousands of more border patrols and not doing anything to, to really resolve this issue. I think we really need a voice. There is not a good Latina voice in the United States. It hasn't been organized well. Uh, we don't have a good immigrant voice in a sense, but I want to point you to the Immigrant Forum out of uh, New York, out of uh, Washington, D.C., the National Immigration Forum as the national advocacy group. Working with groups like the National Immigration Forum, we can address this issue. We can ask for a change. The A word under the Bush administration isn't going to get heard. There's not going to be an amnesty. But there will be uh, worker visas, I think, much more widely available and the, a day exchange that will become normative if we hold together and work on it. But boy, I sure don't see it in Boston yet where we have a big enough coalition. So I want to reinforce the fact that if anything happens out of tonight, I hope we have a lot more people saying, count on me, I'm working on you, with you. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Buzz Harris. I just want to thank the woman, wherever you went, who stood up and, and offered information about the legalization effort. I'll, I'll check that out, because that was going to be my first question. Like, what can we do? Because I agree with the gentleman who just spoke. If we don't do something after watching this, then it hasn't been for naught, but it hasn't been as much as it could be. Um, and I wanted to say, too, I'm a, a gay white man who's a civil rights activist, and we always ask straight people to stand up with us, but then it's sort of incumbent on me. You know, that's not one direction. So I'll be glad to check that out and see. Uh, my, my elected representatives know I have a big mouth. I'm glad to talk to them. So, <laughs> And I want to invite other people, you know, if you're, if you're in a place of privilege where other people are at risk, take advantage of it. I mean, I don't give a damn what the INS thinks about me. You know, I can talk to them or whoever. Anyway, you get the idea. But I have a, I have a couple of specific questions just to help me and maybe other people here know more. Several people have mentioned that um, the Homeland Security Act and the Patriot Act, both pieces of legislation I detest from what I know about them, what I really think, right? Um, but I don't know what impact they have on immigration and on immigrant workers. And so I'm wondering if people here who know something about that could say something about it so we might all know more. Thanks. Do you feel comfortable addressing? I, I cannot be, I don't feel comfortable. I'll, I'll say what I know. Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> because I'm not a policy um, wonk, as they say, but I um, – I, I understand about the Patriot Act that if you are an undocumented person, well, you're also at risk if you're a citizen, but basically if you engage in political activity that uh, with an organization or a group of people that is considered to be, um, you know, it's one of the listed terrorist organizations of our government, which is not published, um, then you are, um, you can be deported for, or, or um, enter into deportation proceedings. Now, that's the threat out there. Um, there, there are probably people in the audience who can give um, stories about this because I know that already um, immigrants are suffering under the Patriot Act and the Homeland Security Acts. And just to say also that with the Homeland Security Act now, there is no immigration and national, naturalization service. The INS doesn't exist. It's now part of the Homeland Security Department. And there's a, a huge organizational nightmare going on there. So immigrant advocates and immigrant communities are concerned, rightly so, about this problem and are trying to address it. Um, and I, and I, I'm sorry, someone else can talk about the policy stuff, but I did want to mention one more thing, which is um, it's a local policy issue about legalization that our first goal is to pass a city council resolution in Boston, and the, a draft of it is on the table. So if you are a resident in Boston and support this legislation, please uh, call your city councilor. Thank you.
I also want to add uh, with regards to the Patriot that it's even more, um, it's, it's severely dangerous. I mean, in addition to being deported, they can take in any person um, who gets involved in political activity or, and let's define political activity. Are we talking about demonstrations? Um, you know, just standing outside with a sign and be pulled in for questioning. You have no right to a lawyer. You have no right to make any phone calls. You can basically disappear for three months and they can question you for a limited time, unlimited time. Okay? No one knows where you are, who you're with, or how they're questioning you. They have a right to do that if they think you're a threat to the American government or allied to any of these countries which whose list is not published. <laughs> so it is incredibly sensitive for immigrants to be, to be even participating politically. We're talking about let's get involved, what are we going to do, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's imperative and that's so important for those of us who are uh, legal citizens or, e or ci you know, legal or citizens here to be able to do that for the undocumented folks because there is a terrible fear that is only going to be increasing for those people who are undocumented to be able to participate in political activities um, as simple as just sitting in a room going to a meeting at the American Red Cross. And um, some people are petrified of doing that. So it's inc even more incumbent upon us to be able to, to do that for for. Um, our, our fellow human beings. Um, the other thing I wanted to, to note as well that I know that it's very interesting what she mentioned about the homeland security and the INS. What type of message is the United States government posing when it's merging the INS with homeland security? That's an incredible message. We got to think about that. What are they trying to say? And what are we going to do about that, right? So. Uh, and I have to put my two cents in as, as a political person and head of a Latino political organization. Unfortunately, we only deal with, now we're very new, we're only two years old and we only deal with state issues, right? But all politics is local. And I know of a senator that's running for president that happens to be from Massachusetts. So that is incredibly, that's incredibly, um, that's incredibly important to know and to use. And that's just a little suggestion I wanted to pose. Any other comments? Uh, do you believe that we could wind up like, like, uh, like back into the days of the Palmer raids? Anybody, anybody, want, anybody want to take that question? There was back in the 30s, Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer was, he was winding, rounding up immigrants and for deportation that was suspected to be subversives. Well, I think a lot of people fear that we might be headed in that direction. I, I don't know, it, it's hard to imagine that we would get to that place, but uh, I think given some of the legislation that's in, been introduced the past a uh, couple of years, people are feeling uh, very threatened, and I think rightly so. Um, are there any other comments? Yes. Yes, please, uh, microphone. My name is Isabel Mendoza, and um, my parents came to the United States about 30 years ago. They were illegal immigrants. I mean, they didn't work as hard as the people in the film, but I can't identify with it because Part of my family was here, part of the family was over there until everybody moved up here. Looking for what? For opportunities. I think that if we would have stayed in my country, things would not have been the same for me, personally. Uh, I now work for the Massachusetts Migrant Education Program, and we are an educational program. We work with trying to identify migrant families in the area so they can provide services for them. And one of the things that we find is it's very hard for us to find those families because a lot of them are illegal immigrants. Uh, they're hiding, they're scared, and the kids are suffering academically. So we try to find the families. One of our goals is to go to the communities and find out how can we recruit these families so we can offer those services. So yo me identifique mucho con la película porque a mí también me pasó lo mismo y vinimos con mi familia. Fue bien difícil, o sea que... Eh, 
tratar de salir adelante en este país. Es el país de las oportunidades, como decían uno de los muchachos ahí, si uno quiere trabajar, trabaja, si uno quiere estudiar, estudia. Se hace un poco difícil si uno tiene papeles, especialmente ahora, y si no se sabe el inglés más que todo. Gracias. Gracias. Time for one more. The most striking thing uh, moment for me in the film was the, I believe he was uh, a neighbor who was interviewed and who said uh, that he didn't want immigrants coming to this country. And I thought this was really interesting because this was a white man in Texas and I guarantee you that his family did, was not, his family did not come from there. <laughs> um, this, this struck home pretty, pretty hard because um, my, my I'm from this country. My parents are from, uh, were born in this country. But my grandparents came to this country in the 20s, escaping the persecution of the Jews in Europe. That, you know, my, just because I was born here, just because my parents were born here, I'm still part of an immigrant family. Right. And, right. you know, the, to expect that we're going, you know, to, to come to this country be treated that way and then, then expect that, that you're not going to treat the people coming into this country after you the same way and expect that they're going to get a re, uh, be treated as human beings is ludicrous. That's right. That reminds me of a comic strip that I saw in, I think, I can't remember what newspaper, but it was, the first scene was the, legisl the United States Congress saying all immigrants should leave immediately the United States. And then the second piece of the comic strip was this Indian chief going, <laughs> right? So thank you very much for the opportunity. One uh, last note. I'm not sure, but I think that they're uh, following the broadcast of this program. There'll be an, an announcement of a website which will have a lot of resources, national resources, for those of you that are interested. Yeah. Thank you. I, I thought I would come back for the goodbye.